Hello, Cider Explorers. It just rolled into September, and thank God, because it's been so darn hot that I feel like collectively graft cider makers have sweated so much we could start a hard seltzer brand. Anyways, let's get into our fall series. So this is Red Row Ruin. Um, it's the start of our um, fall book of nomad, and it's inspired um, through yeast and flavors into being a Nordic mead series. Um, so very traditional. And when we approached this, we used um, uh, a Nordic strain of yeast called Kavik yeast. It's a higher fermenting temperature yeast. And traditionally this yeast um, was transferred from batch to batch in old Nordic meads by drying out yeast plugs on top of wood, almost necklaces, and transferring it from batch to batch. Um, we thought this was a great yeast profile to play around with and a great concept. So we thought about you know places like Noma, the restaurant that it's known for its crazy ingredients and fermentation. So this is gonna come out somewhere in between and uh, you know this Nordic inspired mead through ingredients and also kind of playing into almost like an Amaro. This one in particular, Red Row Ruin, is a cranberry based mead um, where we use a blend of uh, rosemary, cinnamon, yarrow, as well as, um, Christ, gotta, gotta go in for the extra, the rose petals, hawthorn berries, and orange peel. And I think we actually had a couple more things in there because really what this is all about is creating layers of flavor through small additions. Um, and I really think, you know, just like a lot of Nordic dishes or say like Amaro's, you really get it from layering on multiple ingredients. So right off the bat, you can just look at that color. It is fantastic. It's a ton of cranberries in there. The sweetness from this um, comes from a little bit of, uh, of cranberry and honey in there for the residual sugar. So only three grams. Let's give it a snip. So right off the bat, you know, rosemary is predominant in the nose. You get the cranberry underneath. You can almost like taste, smell the tannins of the cranberry and then a little orange peel kind of rising over the top. Then kind of like these, these hints of spices underneath. Wow. It's almost like um, like this Nordic shrub or cocktail inspired thing. It's got really nice acidity. Cranberry comes all the way through and you get pops of rosemary right up front and then it kind of mellows into that like that kind of like earthy yarrow and cinnamon um, all kind of working underneath um, it. Really great and a good kind of complex thing to sip as you're out by the you know the campfire or as you do your you know uh, your day hikes out and to see the foliage. Uh, the next one that we got is a collaboration and this is, was a lot of fun. So we worked with Hoof Hearted out of Ohio. Um, really been a fan of a lot of their work and the labels are just awesome. We try to replicate some of that with this one. This one's Nouveau Riche, which is all about, you know, the concept itself, which is carbonic cherry wine cider. It's, it's an amalgamation, but it's trying to do something very old in a very new way. So we took uh, local English Morello cherries um, from uh, our good uh, friends Fix Farm, about 40 minutes north of here. We put in the cherries whole, put them under a blanket of CO2. And what that does is it tells um, the enzymes inside the cherries to start uh, fermenting inside the skin. So uh, the fermentation starts going on and then around 2% alcohol, there's so much pressure inside those skins, it pops and then the liquid leaks out. So you do this in winemaking traditionally to remove a lot of the high tannins from the skin. And what we did um, was we didn't remove them from the skins immediately, but there was a no press. So we didn't press them off to get the high tannins. We actually let it sit on top of the pressed cherry juice along with the uh, cherry pits, which gives it a kind of like almondy kind of flavor, which we think is really cool and plays around with it. Then after uh, sitting, we blended in about 50 gallons of California white wine concentrate, fermented that, and then blended in a little bit of our food or cider uh, to finish it off. To really kind of create this zany, nice acidity, kind of natural wine inspired cider. You know, one of the things that we love to do is when we work with uh, breweries, we say, you know, what would you guys want to create? Um, and this was a good, you know, kind of opportunity to have them step out. They love natural wines. We love natural wines. Carbonic cherry was in season. No one to use something local. So it was a lot of fun uh, for this project. So gonna be a little more, you know, like natural wine. Let's give it a sniff and see what we're getting. So right on the front, you know, you get cherry, you get a little bit of that poppy zingy acid. 
Um, I would say you, you get a little of that almond characteristic from the, uh, the cherry pits as well, which is really cool. And I mean, you see this a lot, kind of that juicy characteristic, berry characters that you see in a lot of carbonic um, style wines right up front on the nose. So let's give it a uh, sip. Really nice balance, zingy up front. The cherry is not in your face. Cherry at the end of the day, sour cherries aren't the punchiest of flavors, but it really brings this nice zinginess. It drinks cherry throughout, but it's light cherry. And then you get the beautiful acidity from that food or cider, little bit of oak. And again, that kind of like almondy, kind of like um, hazelnutty kind of characteristic from the pits. So really fun time with them. And I know as we work and get closer to our tasting room opening, which is, you know, it's always right around the corner, um, but we're really hoping that we get it up and running um, by Q3 of uh, 2022, is working more with local farms, doing more kind of natural wine, natural cider kind of stuff. So a great way to kind of start just kind of working these things into our program to learn more and more about these styles. Until next time, cheers, Cider Explorers.